Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a couple of very interesting topics. The first one is gonna be about Nick Walker and his leg development. His problem at the Arnold Classic was mainly the fullness of his legs or the sweep in his quads from the front, and that is mainly, if you ask me, the reason why he lost this show. And now he's working on improving that. So in this video, first we're gonna talk about Nick Walker and his leg development, but before we get to that, I just wanna tell you guys, if you guys want to support me and my channel, you can do that by simply buying one of the Old School Labs supplements, for example, this new flavor of the Old School Labs Vintage Brawn Protein Powder, it's mint chocolate chip, it is a great flavor, and if you guys want to try it, you can just click on the link down below in the description of this video, and just use the code EVAN, if you use my code, it will help me tremendously, so guys, if you want to support me and my channel, just buy any of the supplements and use the code EVAN, thank you guys so much. Now let's proceed to the video, so, once again, Again, as I said, the main reason, if you ask me, and if you ask many of the people, if you ask the judges at the Arnold Classic, as Nick Walker did ask, and their feedback, their main criticism of Nick Walker, and basically their reason why he lost this show was the leg size, the legs from the front, the quad fullness, which was definitely lacking, not just compared to the other guys at the Arnold Classic, which it absolutely did, the other guys had had much more sweepier legs. Uh, Samson Dowda, who won the show more than anybody else, really, of course, Rami with his humongous legs, but weren't really exactly well shaped, and even Andrew Jack, who is definitely not as big as Nick Walker, had sweepier legs from the front. People who were there, they said that Andrew wasn't really the thickest guy in the leg department, but he had really sweepy legs, he had that illusion of really dominant lateralis, lateral head or the outer sweep. Nick Walker had a really flat outer sweep, and the question is why? Well, one of the reasons, of course, is him simply not having dominant lateralis, and then when he died it down, and he died it down hard, he really went for conditioning for this show, when he did that, he lost his weakest body parts, which are his quads, and that's why his legs were flatter, but other than that, could there be another reason, aside from genetics, that his legs are flat, and yes, in my opinion, there is another factor, which is training. Recently, I made a video on this topic, why Nick Walker doesn't do full range of motion, why is he doing half reps? If you guys want to hear my opinion on this, I encourage you to go and watch this video, but the point of this video is that he actually changed his training style, which in my opinion is going to result in better gains in more quad sweep. I am well aware that I am not the one to be giving advices, training advices to somebody who is on the level of Nick Walker, I am competing in classic, I am three times smaller than Nick, but as far as my body parts, I think legs are my most dominant body part, and I don't know how much of that is genetic, I do believe that the reason for that is mainly training, because I am doing heavy and deep squats, heavy and deep lunges, heavy and deep leg presses, and I think no matter how bad your leg genetics are, if you're doing these three movements and you're doing them heavy and deep, there is no way your legs aren't gonna grow. If you have weak arms genetically, you aren't really able to do much. Like, it's not really hard to train arms, and it's not really complicated. When it comes to, for example, back training, that's something you need to learn, you need to create mind-muscle connection, but when it comes to legs, it's all about going super deep and super heavy, and it seems like Nick Walker has started doing just that, and it seems like his legs are already getting bigger and fuller. Look at this form, look at this range of motion. So it's really hard to do this, actually, you need to have a really good ankle mobility to go this deep, but apparently, he's got it. And he's doing speed squats, which I think is a really good variation of squats, you're not really using too much of your lower back and your core strength, you're not thickening your waist that much, and you're really able to focus on simply just your legs. And if you have ankle mobility like this, like Nick does, I mean, that's perfect. And also he's doing wider stance, which I think is gonna activate more of his lateral head outer sweep, and I think if he keeps doing this until the Mr. Olympia, I think he's going to make serious improvements in his legs. Why hasn't he been doing this so far? Honestly, I have no idea. Now here he's doing some lunges, and I love the fact that he's doing them this deep, actually he's in a deficit, he used two plates to make these lunges even deeper, but of course for more leg growth, he needs to do them with more weight, he needs to pack on some serious weight and really do them heavy. 
Right after the Arnold Classic, he posted this video of him doing some Smith squats. In the caption, he is saying he is trying to improve his legs, but I almost made a video about this, and I almost said there is no way he's gonna make his legs bigger doing these half reps. Like, he's barely even squatting here. I mean, he's going down like three inches, if that much. He is focusing on the shortened extreme of the range of motion, which, if I understood correctly from Ben Palkowski, uh, Joe Bennett, and other really good trainers, coaches, even Jay Cutler was saying this, he was training like this, he was doing these kind of reps to develop more of the teardrop, the vastus medialis, the inner part of the quad, not for the lateral head. Sure, stance does have something a little bit to do with which head of the quad you are activating, but it's more so about the extreme of the range of motion, whether you're going deep or you're doing half reps or in Nick's case, quarter reps. So based on what I saw so far, and I saw a lot from Nick Walker and the way he's training, I think he developed his legs a lot, considering the way he was training them so far. So I don't think his legs are genetically inferior, I think it's only the way he was training them so far. With his genetics, he got away with it. A lot of most people, if they did the training style that he was training his legs with, they wouldn't grow any legs. Nick got away with it because he has crazy growth genetics. But this kind of training, this style of training, is definitely gonna make him develop his legs, bring them up to another level of development. And that just might be enough for him to even win the Olympia if the other guys, the other three or four guys, are a little bit off and he is completely on and he is bigger and he is improved and he is super full and he is super conditioned which I'm sure he's going to be at the Olympia so there is a chance that he can actually win the title. Also, if you look at the other guys with the biggest legs ever, like Tom Platts, like Ronnie Coleman, like uh, now we have James Hollingshead, all these guys have one thing in common when it comes to leg training. They were all squatting heavy and deep. You have guys like, for example, Johnny Jackson, who had really bad legs, but you can watch their form when they're squatting and they're doing shallow squats. So with this change in Nick's training style, I think he's going to bring up his legs quite a bit, and it might just mean a win at the Olympia. What do you guys think? All right, next we have a physique update of the powerlifter Larry Wills, who seems to be actually preparing for a classic physique competition. So Larry made this post, two of his physique updates, and the question in the caption, am I looking classic yet, be honest. So in this video, I'm gonna try and answer this question as honestly as I can. So the first photo is him doing a little crucifix pose. Uh, in this one, with the vacuum, with a relatively small waist, he actually looks quite decent. I would say he does look pretty classic, surprisingly. More classic than ever, really. I've seen a lot of photos of Larry actually doing bodybuilding poses, but I don't remember ever seeing him looking as classic as he is right here. So I'm guessing he is practicing posing, he is trying to make his physique look even more classy than it actually is with good posing, he is practicing vacuums because this is a pretty deep vacuum, the ribcage is actually pretty wide which makes it look even more impressive, and the waist size is small, and I think it's down in size since he went off the gear and lost all this mass, so along with it he lost the waist size as well. And he started looking surprisingly classic. Now we also got a front double bicep pose. I have to say, I don't like the shape of his biceps. Even though I might be jealous of the size of his biceps, because I have horrible arms, I would love to have these big biceps, but the way they are shaped is just weird. It's, it's strange. I know he tore one of his biceps. I don't know if he tore both. I'm pretty sure he tore his left one. So you can clearly see a separation between the two heads, the outer and the inner head of the biceps. Uh, and, uh, you know, it looks impressive, it looks strange, it looks, it looks weird, it looks freaky, but does it look beautiful? Does it look classic? I wouldn't say so. The size of it and proportions, that's good, but just the shape of it is throwing me off a little. However, for somebody... Uh, for Larry Wheels, for somebody who is really known for being the freaky, the, the, the strong, super strong guy who has been doing powerlifting and strongman kind of training for his entire career, for his entire life, he actually does look surprisingly classic. Like most of the uh, strongmen and the powerlifters, they destroy the lines, they ruin their physiques. If they ever were classic, they lost it 
due to all strength training you know that kind of training really requires a lot of core strength so they usually build up their cores like their stomachs their obliques their lower backs and once they blow out their lines it's really not they, they usually don't come back from it however larry wills he has really good genetics actually for bodybuilding and that's why he actually remained pretty classic like he didn't blow out his waistline that much and here, actually, his, his waist looks really freaking small. So if you talk about the wheat taper, the way his lats are popping, the size of his waistline compared to the shoulder width, and just the overall silhouette of his physique, he looks pretty good. The thing that I don't like, however, once again, is his biceps, and also we don't see his legs, which are probably smaller than his upper body. So I don't know about the balance, I don't know about the symmetry, but from what I'm seeing right here, I am pleasantly surprised. He looks more classic than he ever did, that's for sure. And lastly, in this video, we have a physique update of Derek Lunsford, which I found very surprising, and it is recent. As you can see in the caption, Derek says, it's Flex Friday, and this was posted uh, actually yesterday, which was Friday, so this is recent. And how long it's been, like three months after the Mr. Olympia, this guy still has shredded glutes, and he grew, he grew a ton. So I'm pretty sure he's taking it easy, like there is a long time until the Olympia, so I'm guessing he's gonna get a little bit fatter towards the end of his offseason, but as for right now, he's still maintaining pretty solid conditioning, like really solid conditioning, I mean he looks, I don't know, 4 weeks out, 3 weeks out, like he's holding a lot of water if he dehydrated himself right now, I would say he's two weeks out or something, like if he really started pushing it, like trying to burn as much fat as possible, and if he got rid of all the water that he's holding, if he got dehydrated, like this would be pretty much staged right in two weeks, two, three weeks, something like that. So that's really impressive for him to look like this deep into his off season. This tells me that this guy is working really hard. So I, once again, I said it before and, I'm, and I'll say it again. This guy is my favorite for the Mr. Olympia 2023. I don't think it's Hari Japan. I think this guy is the favorite to win it, and I think he will do it. I mean, it depends on how how much Samson Daura improves. It depends on what Hari Japan is going to bring. Is he going to improve as well? He's also a young guy. I mean, he's like 35, 36 right now, Hari, so he can actually improve for sure. And it depends on Nick Walker as well, like how much he's going to improve. And it depends on Derek Lansford, how well he peaks. But considering that he's working with Hani Rambud, he's probably going to peak just well. So, again, this guy is my favorite to win the 2023 Mr. Olympia. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. And once again, if you want to support me, just buy one of the old school lab supplements and use the code EVEN. That's it. Thank you guys so much. All the best and bye-bye.